a night at the opera. There have been literally thousands for Seattle Opera's general director, Spate Jenkins. But now his illustrious career is coming to an end after nearly three decades of artistic triumph. So we followed Jenkins around one night on foot and we had a little trouble keeping up. Before the lights go down, or the music starts. Even before the audience arrives, Spade Jenkins is making his rounds. I'm always somewhat excited before we start a performance, hoping that everything will really go the way it should, right. and that everybody will sing well, and everybody's well. It's not just tonight's show, it's every night. I think in these 31 years, I've missed about five or six performances. It's important for me to see the singers before, to see the conductor, to see the director, how are you? Thank you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they should always know that you're there and supporting them. Well, there he is at the, at the piano. Just checking on you to see if you're good for tonight. Perfect. Wonderful. That is something that is not normal. When you do a lot of work here and you go to other places and you expect the general director to poke his or her head in before the show, and not necessarily happening. It's one of the reasons people like to work here. So, kill the tenor. Kill the tenor, kill the tenor. <laughs> I do, I do, I do for sure. Spade will always come back before the show and will always be there at the intermission. And if he's not, then it's not that there's something wrong with you. I mean, there must be something wrong in the world. There must have been an earthquake or something. It's that hands-on approach that makes you feel as though you are part of a family. Now, in many companies, again, you don't see the boss. You see Spade every day of your working life in Seattle. Yeah, right. How are we doing? Uh, we are doing well, actually. We a... Jenkins is involved in every aspect of a production. His knowledge of every note, story, and staging of the repertoire is unusual, even among general directors. Also, he's the only director of a major opera company that I know that's at every rehearsal. <laughs> He makes sure that the details are there. He makes sure that the artistic experience is on the highest possible level. Someone says, you know, if you don't do this, who in the audience is gonna notice? Well, somehow, we'll all notice. To do opera on the highest level, you have to be involved with the lighting and with the sets and with the direction and with the musical performance. We are getting opera on the highest possible level because of this uh, almost myopic view of this one man. I don't mind, I don't mind leaving that. That's what I originally thought. Oh, we're really good. Yeah, we'll drop it right there because I think she's what are you going to do? Uh, oh, yeah. It's a time honored ritual of Jenkins to greet opera goers at the top of the staircase. Yes, at every show. Congratulations and thanks for all your work. I never got a chance to say hello to you. Well, I'm Tell glad nice we're doing it now. Yes, right. The only reason I've ever had success here is because the audience has believed in what we were doing. And my gratitude to the Seattle audience is enormous. And I'm here. Yeah, thank you. Every year I know I'm going to see great opera because I'm here in Seattle. And I do credit Spate with that. Have a great one. 40 seconds. Everybody's feeling good and that's what we need. Nobody's having any trouble. You. So nice Hello. to have you in Seattle. <laughs> We're good to have you here. Hi. As we always say about your husband, kill the tenor. <laughs> the Metropolitan Opera presents Live from the Met. Tonight, Rigoletto by Giuseppe Verdi. And now, your host, noted lecturer and music critic, Spate Jenkins. Good evening, and welcome to the Metropolitan Opera. In 1982, Spade Jenkins was a New York opera critic and host of Live from the Met when Seattle Opera hired him. He had never produced an opera. I think the board took a big risk in, in hiring me. I was basically, I had never administered anything. I not only had, I had never worked for an opera company, I had never been an administrator at all. But he knew opera, and he knew what he wanted. And I said this from the very beginning. I wanted theatrical opera here. Seattle Opera was ambitious. They'd already produced Wagner's Ring.
The ring is the most complicated thing to do in opera. A mammoth undertaking for any company, the ring cycle is 16 hours of epic legend over four operas. The music world took notice. There are places where you go and you're sitting in a theater and you turn to someone, you mention Seattle, and they say, oh, the ring, Spade Jenkins. It's not just the ring that's made people take notice. Under Jenkins, traditional and new operas alike are daring, innovative, brilliantly cast, and sold out. It is a very prestigious, important place to perform. Singers want that on their resume because they know great quality work is coming out of here. More than anything, Spade Jenkins is known for finding new voices and nurturing singers. Singers who have that special something. It's kind of mysterious where he finds them. I'm not interested in pretty voices. Pretty, just pretty singing doesn't interest me at all. In fact, I don't even like it. We're a theatrical art form. And what I want to see is somebody who can really convey the meaning of the words. I first met Spate when I was a young artist at the Metropolitan Opera in New York City. It's not only the voice, it's the willingness to take risks, um, the courage to go beyond what you think you can do. And he enables that because he's hands-on. I think it really comes from loving what is unique about every singer. It seems that he most wants everyone to be their best individual self. And then he puts that all together to create what, what we all hope will be a, a wonderful theater experience. When the curtain comes down, the night's not over for Jenkins. He goes right to a post-performance discussion. Though he knows it inside out, Jenkins says the love of opera doesn't require much from anyone. You have to like the sound of the human voice. You have to believe people can sing where they're supposed to talk and you have to accept emotion. You can't be afraid of emotion because we are an emotional art form. And if emotion bothers you, then don't bother to come because that's because you're not going to like it. His work for all these years has been for the true love of the art form. It's not about him and what he gains from it, except the pure joy of being a part of the process. And that's what he loves more than anything. The Seattle Opera is recognized as a terrific place to work because it's happy and well supported, has a great audience base, and I think all of that comes from the top. It comes from the company that Spade has fostered all these years. The time has come for me to go. Seattle Opera is a great institution of which Seattle can, Seattle, all Seattleites can be proud. For now, know that I love you all. Oyota Ho. Seattle Opera will celebrate the career of Spate Jenkins with a special concert and dinner on August 9th. For more information, check out seattleopera.org.